Our first speaker, as you can see from the presentation, is Richard Heisenbottel, and he's a founding principal and president of R.J. Heisenbottel Architects, which is located in Coral Gables. Richard, many of you know of him or have worked with him before, um, so he's no stranger to preservation with over four decades of expertise in all aspects of uh, architecture and interior design with a specialty in historic preservation. So he has done so many historic preservation projects, but just a few of them to name off. The Skaya Museum and Gardens, the uh, Gusman Center for Performing Arts, the Colony Theater, the Freedom Tower, City of Miami City Hall, which is Art Deco, and uh, Trinity Episcopal Cathedral and Miami Edison uh, Middle School, among many others. Um, he has served as president of AIA Miami and of the Dade Heritage Trust, and has also been a member of Miami's Historic Preservation Board and chair of the Coral Gables Preservation Board. And he's an alumnus of University of Miami, where he is active in their architecture school. So without further ado, let's all welcome Richard. Thank you. Well, thank you again all for coming out and, uh, and for, for your support for historic preservation. Uh, as, as one of the gentlemen in the front row was telling me just a few moments ago, every one of us here likes old things. Well, um, so I'm getting there myself, uh, and, you know, and, and, and um, and uh, the, more I, the more time I spend on historic preservation, and I, and I have really been in the historic preservation business uh, since about 1972, uh, when I left New York City after restoring one of the first uh, cast iron buildings uh, at 11th Street and, and, uh, and Broadway, uh, the beginning of what later became the cast iron district. Um, I thought to myself, um, the, the, the name of this series is The Art of Architecture. And earlier today, I, uh, I was at the Coral Gables Museum meeting with the museum director and, and his curator for architecture and, 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 uh, and planning uh, uh, items in their collection. And, and we, just, we just got to talking and he said to me, you know, Richard, there's a, there's a difference between the artist and the painter. And, and I got to thinking about that in terms of architecture and what I should be showing you of, of, uh, of our work tonight. So I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna show you what I think for the most part are, are projects that fall into that category of art, as in the art of architecture, uh, as opposed to the, sh the architecture of shelter. Uh, and, and here's a, here, this, we're, gonna, we're gonna play a little bit of game with this first, uh, with this first uh, presentation. Uh, you may have heard about this particular house. It was in the news uh, recently. Uh, it, it is a rather spectacular uh, uh, place. I'm not going to give you the name just yet. I'm going to ask to see who can, who can uh, guess the name. Uh, it is owned uh, or, or was owned until just a week or two ago uh, by one of our community's uh, biggest philanthropists. Uh, and uh, and you haven't if it it's sold for a record amount of money. Uh, this this is this is Adrian Arst, uh, the second house of Adrian Arst. There are two houses on the property. This is uh, um, the historic house that is is on the property, and it's called Villa Serena. So so we did have somebody that uh, that, that knew who that knew who it was. Uh, this is Villa Serena, and. And I chose to, to talk about Villa Serena a little bit because it is truly an artistic uh, property. Uh, it, it started out uh, a lot as a cottage for William Jennings Bryan. William Jennings Bryan, uh, former Secretary of State, I think he was two or three time presidential candidate, um, was, was the man well known for the monkey trials. Um, this, uh, and, and, and he was also known as a salesman uh, for Merrick at the city of Coral Gables. And he would also be really quite a religious fellow. And he would have hundreds of people on his back of lawn on a given Sunday afternoon. And he would preach away to, to, to these hundreds of people who would come to hear him speak. Uh, kind of hard to imagine. Uh, 
And, and Adrian uh, gave us the, the challenge of restoring this home when, you know, when, when she bought it uh, somewhere around 2010. And you, you, you look at it, and it started out life as a cottage. Uh, and then when, when uh, Jennings Bryan um, moved to Florida permanently and, and, and retired from, from Washington, D.C., he turned it into a more formal, more formal home and added uh, some fireplaces that he brought out of the Washington, D.C. hotel. But you just get a chance for, for here to, to understand the, the floor plan of the house. And then we're going to take a walk around it, and, and, uh, and, and you'll see some of the, some of the work uh, that we did to to turn this wonderful piece of art back into an amazing piece uh, of art. You enter through this little uh, courtyard uh, in, the, in, in, in the middle over here, and, uh, and, and you enter into this foyer with the dining room on one side, a living room on the other side, two, two very small porches that were always uh, enclosed, uh, and, and kind of a family room and a sitting room on, on the right-hand side, and a, uh, and, and, a, and a private office area with the uh, the kitchen off on the left, and uh, and, and, a, and a dining space, uh, a, a breakfast room off uh, on the left over here also, and then the dining room, and then upstairs there are three bedrooms: the main bedroom, uh, the 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 um, and and flanked on the other side over here by uh, a, a second bedroom, and, and in fact a third bedroom, uh, and and a very special bath. You'll love this bathroom when you see it. Uh, and you're going, you're getting there by going up these two stairs, and then, and then with a little veranda that happens to overlook Biscayne, uh, uh, Biscayne Bay. So this is what the house looked like historically in the top uh, photograph. That's a 19, a 19 photograph, um, and and this is the the front of the house as as it is today with this wonderful gravel drive. And, and, and um, really amazing landscaping uh, all, all around it. This is, this is it back again in William Jennings Bryan's day. I should, I should also uh, give, give credit uh, to the owners of Chuck Full of Nuts. Everybody remember Chuck Full of Nuts coffee? Anybody, uh, anybody a former New Yorker who would get Chuck Full of Nuts coffee every morning? I did for, for a very, very long time. Well, uh, it was secondarily after Bryan's death, it passed uh, to uh, the owners of, of truck full of nuts and 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 it became it became uh, their home so our our challenge here was to completely restore a house that had virtually been abandoned for 25 years you know there was just uh it, it, everything that could be wrong with the home was wrong with the home uh and so we started with uh, with uh with a new new windows throughout the house. Of course, they're made out of wood and mahogany, and they match the original windows perfectly. We're really pleased with the way the way that turned out. We we restored all of the the floors in the house. We actually found uh, the the letters between Jen Jennings Bryan's wife uh, and and the artisans in Cuba who actually made the Cuban tile on these floors. Keep an eye open for for that as we as we go a little further uh, in into the into the house. There's, the, there's these tile floors um, that, are, that are literally uh, throughout the house and, and, and incredibly uh, unique, uh, adding uh, again to part of the art of this house. And, and even, whoops, let's go back one for, just for fun. Um, and and these stairways that go up on both sides after you come in the, uh, the courtyard entrance, all decorated with this decorative tile and again, Again, more of the more of the decorative tile, more of the uh, the decorative light fixtures that were part of this. So, so when the Jennings Bryan moved down here permanently, uh, he added to the house these uh, uh, these two marble fireplaces. But when we got the house, it had two mar yeah, There were three marble fireplaces actually. Uh, anyway, he um, he. Uh, he had brought them down from a hotel that was being uh, de uh, demolished in Washington, D.C., and he, and he literally put them in over here, and they became this, one of the centerpieces of each of the, uh, the rooms. And in any event, by the time we got the house, one of those had already been removed and, and, and probably relocated someplace else. So we've got, we have no fireplace, and, uh, and, and we have to recreate a fireplace that is 
that is not the same as the one that is, is in the opposite room on the other side of the house, uh, but certainly similar, compatible, something that feels like it, like it, like it belongs. Uh, and so that was, that was part of our challenge, recreating uh, the, the fireplace. Look at the upper left you, and uh, you see the, uh, the kind of condition of the house that we, went, um, when we took it over, um, somebody had built other walls that came right up to, to, the, to the fireplace and, and you know, the interior of the house was, was half, uh, half demolished and ceilings were falling down all over the place. We had to match the marble and match the color of the marble and then have artisans uh, go ahead and, and, uh, and, uh, and, and re-carve those uh, the fireplaces. And you'll see them again as, as we go forward. But, um, but what, what we have again is this, the house had been so um, significantly modified, whoops, let's go back one more. Uh, I'll, I'll get the buttons right sooner or later. This is the way we, we took over the bedrooms and we took over uh, the, uh, the, the bathroom. You can see the, the kind of, uh, you know, stylistically how it had changed over the years. And, and this is what we actually did uh, with, uh, with uh, the bedrooms over here. You, um, you may remember a certain uh, president had a certain set of daughters, um, Obama. Uh, well, this, this bedroom was deliberately set up by, by Adrian uh, for, as a place for the Obamas to stay when they visited Miami. Now, we can imagine that they probably only stayed here a couple times, so I do know Joe Biden stayed here. Um, but, but that room was set up for uh, Natasha, and I'm forgetting, what's the other daughter? Malia. Ma Malia. Ma Malia, am I right? Yeah. Um, and so... Uh, and this is, this is, in fact, uh, the master bath on the opposite side of, of, uh, of, of the house. So it was, in fact, a, um, just an absolute uh, ch challenge and an absolute uh, charm to be able to take a house from, from one that looked like this uh, and taking the kitchen and turning it into a kitchen that today uh, looks like this. this the left is, is the way we took over the house and, and the right uh, is is our restoration of, uh, of those rooms. And, and you can imagine, I keep showing you this, this floor um, and, the, and, and the different kinds of uh, Cuban tile that are on, that, on the floor. Uh, we had a little problem with the floor. The floor had completely, <sighs> the concrete had completely disintegrated. The reinforcing steel that you're seeing here was popping and, and there was a cavity under the floor where the, where the, the land had physically settled from, from where it was cast. So we now have a, a, a floor that is completely unsafe. Uh, but, we, but we cannot just jackhammer it out and pour a whole new floor in there because if we do, we lose all of this original tile that is, that is, uh, that is on, on top of it. So, so our challenge was to to find the best way to stabilize the floor and, and, uh, and, and so that structurally it was no longer a problem and save all of this, uh, this amazing uh, Cuban, uh, Cuban tile that's on top of it. And ultimately what we did is we came up with, with the grout mix and we put uh, two or three holes in the floor that we could actually pump grout into and we pumped the underside of the cavity uh, completely full of, of, uh, of concrete grout um, until, it, and, until it literally almost lifted the floor just a little bit. Uh, and, and we knew that we had, we had at that point uh, stabilized it so that it would never, never really go anywhere. Um, so in, in spite of the, the deterioration and the, and the bad condition of the, of the concrete, we were able to save uh, all of those floors. Now, so, so why, why is he showing me this um, the, w the inside of what is uh, an air conditioning unit. Uh, when you see the other photograph, you're going to see that, it, that it's actually, um, uh, it, it looks like um, a liquor cabinet on the outside. Um, but there are two, there are some places in a house like this that, that you cannot manage to get air conditioning the way we know of it, right? We, we, put, a, we put an air conditioning unit, an air handling unit over there, and we distribute air across the ceiling. Well, there's no distributing air across the ceiling because the ceiling is concrete. And, 
And so, so how are we going to air condition this sort of a home? Those two little porches you saw on the floor plan on the left and the right that overlook the bay were so spectacular. You can't drop a ceiling in there. It will look horrible. Um, so, so what we did was we built two decorative oh, wooden uh, cabinets to look like liquor cabinets. Uh, and we put, we, we used chilled water and we ran chilled water to an air conditioning unit that you're seeing the inside of it right now, uh, the, the, to an air conditioning unit that, that just dealt with that particular room itself. So it became a cabinet, a decorative cabinet in very fine wood inside, uh, inside one of these, uh, or inside both of the two porch areas that, uh, that overlooked uh, the bay. And uh, no harm with the ceilings, no harm with with any uh, damage uh, there. So this is kind of the, the careful crafting of uh, and maintaining the historic fabric of, of the house. We got to the, the roof of the house and, and we started looking, this is a, a photo of, of the roof of the house. And you can see these, these pieces of, I hardly call them timber. Uh, if, if they were two by fours, we were lucky. Uh, they, were, they were completely undersized. The, and, and, and as you can see, you know, some of them were very rotten. And, and so we literally had to sister something to them. We didn't want to change the height of the house. We didn't want to change the plaster ceiling. It was still doing fine. So, so, what, so what we did is we placed steel channels, you know, side by side, sistered steel channels next to them so we didn't have to change the dimensions and, and ultimately uh, were able to to maintain the, the same dimensions as the original house. So the, the, the landscape was also a part of a, a, the charm of this amazing place. Uh, this house is, is ready for sea level rise. Uh, it, it is if you, uh, it's, it's actually on um, uh, Brickell Avenue South, the south portion of Brickell Avenue near Vizcaya, just a block away from, uh, from Vizcaya, but, but we often, we often talk about the, the cliff, the, 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 the coral rock bluff. Well, this is the perfect example of the coral rock bluff uh, behind, behind Adrian's home. Uh, that's the, the, lower, this is the lower portion. And, and this is looking back from uh, the dock at the house uh, when it was fully restored now. Uh, and, and, and this is why it is such a spectacular piece of property and, and why it's sold for for as much as it did. Um, the, the house itself is, is, is certainly charming and, and wonderful and it, it makes a fabulous guest house for the main home, which is actually next door. Um, but, but with this view, I've taken some friends here who were, who were very, very wealthy and had some very spectacular houses and, and all they wanted to do was know how they could buy it. <laughs> it was like, okay, okay, forget about mine. <laughs> Um, so this is this is a uh, kind of a, a, a quick tour through uh, through Adrian's villa uh, Villa Serena, and uh, and I'm happy to say that that uh, the money that that uh, that she made from the sale of, of this house and the one next door, the whole the whole estate, uh, is all going to charity, and I champion her for for what she uh, did for historic preservation. And, and for the fact uh, that uh, all of her profits from this are going to charity anyway. That's just absolutely fantastic woman. So great to have been, uh, been a part of it. Following this theme, uh, Daniel, uh, following, following this theme of the art of architecture, you know, there is probably uh, no one uh, be, uh, who was a better champion for the art of architecture in Miami than Charles Deering. And, uh, and I have had the great uh, privilege of being able to work on, on the estate and, and, and probably uh, uh, have done more work on it than, than most uh, anyone else. And so let's, let's, take a, let's take a walk through some of the areas that, that, have, been, uh, that have been restored and some of the areas that, that my firm uh, worked on. Uh, you, you all recognize the water side here and, and and the garden side uh, there. Uh, and, and one of the things that we did, actually we did it twice, and uh, we, we actually worked to create a master plan for, for the entire site. Uh, uh, I, I wonder how many people don't know that there is 
the, the main house site that we see over here and, and, and the barge out, out on, on the water and the, and the pathway that we're all used to, uh, to parking over here and, and walking down. But many of you may not know that there is an entire farm village across the street. And, the farm and this is only a, a, a small piece of, of what was originally Mr. Deering's uh, estate. Uh, the farm actually continued way off into Bay Heights over here on the right hand, to, uh, to the right hand side of, of, of your screen. And, and, uh, and the main house and garden continued all the way through everything that today is, is uh, Mercy Hospital. So uh, if you didn't know that, it, and you, you now do. Um, so, the, so the challenge here in, as part of the master plan is to how to show visitors and how to give them the entire experience. And, and how to bring them to all sides of, of, of the site, you know, and where do you, where do you drop them off? So we conceptualized recreating the original uh, garden that was uh, just off to the, the side of the superintendent's house. He looked out onto it. You know, they had, a, they had an area that was set aside for fresh cut flowers for Mr. Deering. So every day someone could pick his flowers and, and decorate his home with, with fresh cut flowers. So, so we wanted to recreate the flower garden and recreate the, the vegetable garden and recreate the, the fruit trees that, that surrounded this and actually start the experience on this side of the roadway in, in the farm village so that people learn not just about the main house and the art that is the, the you know, man, and all of the art that is in uh, the main house, but, but also learn exactly how the, the rest of the village worked and, and what some of the other uh, buildings were. This, this uh, the chauffeur's quarters is in this, was in this building. So we, we were conceptualizing this by doing renderings of these buildings, all of which have been abandoned by the parks department for many years when we, when we uh, took them. Uh, took them over. This was actually the mule stable area of, of, um, of the house and, the, and the, the, um, we're staring at the dairy building right now on the opposite side. What about the people who worked here? It, it, there's a story there. It's a great and it's a great story. Um, this that is the mule stable that we're looking at and the carriage house on, uh, on the right and the mule stable uh, straight away. Um, and what, what about those, the, the chickens? How do we know it's the chickens, uh, the chicken house? Well, we got little egg windows over there <laughs> that, that they gave us. Again, uh, part of the art of architecture. Um, and, and this was, in fact, the superintendent's house. Not a bad gig as superintendent, huh? Um, I, <laughs> I, I believe that it would, uh, in our master plan, we had called for the ability to sit outside of the superintendent's house and for the public to be able to enjoy, enjoy that area as uh, perhaps a dining experience out, out, outside. Um, and this is, this is what Vizcaya looked like as it was built. Yes, this is, this is what is main, uh, main highway today. It doesn't, doesn't, doesn't quite look like that today, does it? Um, but, but you'll, you'll recognize uh, everything. Just these are original photographs from, from the period while it was under uh, construction. And, and we know that uh, it's uh, Bohemian builders um, really did an awful lot to make this the absolutely incredible place. But when we took over uh, the, the buildings that the East and West Gate Lodge, uh, the blacksmith shop, uh, the garage, uh, these are the farm buildings that, that, uh, that my firm uh, restored. Um, they were in pretty poor condition. They had been uh, seriously damaged by the hurricane. I think everybody can see that this roof and these windows and the doors, it's a mess. And it, and, and it, and it was worse than a mess uh, if we... Um, things had just uh, you know, deteriorated and, and, and damage had, had occurred to finials and... Uh, and and, you know, and, and just the, the wear and tear of, of railings and, and tile over time, exposed to, to, the, to the elements and, and, to, and to the bay and to every hurricane that ever came through Miami. Uh, and so this is the way the offices were in, inside those spaces when we, when we took them over. The offices weren't, weren't too bad, um, but, but they hardly resembled what they were uh, originally. The gate that once uh, w was a part of this uh, entrance feature over here had completely fallen apart and, and we, we salvaged it and, and used it to, to remanufacture a new gate. You'll see that in a minute. 
uh, but replacing the gate with, with just uh, some, uh, a, a metal bar a, a barricade uh, was, a, was really a, a, a sad time for, for Vizcaya. So all of these buildings had to be re-roofed, all of the windows had to be restored. This is the door and, and the kind of window and the kind of condition that we, that we took this building over in. Uh, and and uh, you'll, be, you'll be happy to... Uh, these are the kind of delicate finishes that the Parks Department used. <laughs> Genuine uh, Lawan paneling from the Philippines in 1955. Anyway, um, they're just um, and, 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 and uh, acoustical tile ceilings. Um, in any event, you, you're getting the idea of the physical condition of, of uh, the building. Uh, not, not structurally unsound, by the way, they were all structurally in, in excellent, still in excellent condition, but all of the finishes were, were in desperate uh, need of, of uh, restoration and renewal. So uh, this is the main entrance and, and um, and all of that building from the shutters to the windows uh, were uh, replaced. Uh, all, uh, all of these windows are now actually impact resistant. Uh, this is the building that you saw uh, earlier with, the, with everything uh, fully restored, the screens, the screen doors, um, uh, the lighting, uh, the floors and the doors and the windows on the inside. You think we got the trim right here? I think so. Um, they were absolutely spectacular, the, 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 uh, the brass hardware, uh, and, uh, and all the fireplaces are all back. We had a, a, a really uh, special uh, floor here. We've all seen heart pine floors, but this one is, is, uh, was unique and it's the first time I had seen it. it it's, it's vertical cut grain. And when you, when you cut the, the, the heart pine in the opposite direction, you get all of these little vertical cuts, which are the rings of the tree and it makes for an absolutely spectacular floor. These, these floors in here are all, if, if we got up close to them, you'd be, you'd be really impressed. We, have a, we still have a sample kicking around our office. Uh, just, just an amazing uh, restoration. All of the woodwork in, in the building, all of the plaster work in the building, all of the toilet rooms in the building. So this is actually used day to day now uh, as, as offices for, for Vizcaya. Uh, and uh, and uh, that, that gate, I don't know how clearly this is coming through. I hope you can see it nice and clear, but um, it's completely restored as well. So, um, so just, to, just to give you an idea, the cabinetry matches the original cabinetry that was, that was uh, in, in the space. You can see some of the, some of the, some of the details and the scroll work and the, and, you know, and, and, and the moldings and the trim that all make that, that cabinetry uh, work. Just very, a proud moment for us. Uh, and, and one of the other uh, very special projects for us uh, was the cafe and shop. Now we're on the north side of, of the main house, across the street. Uh, and, and we have uh, uh, an, outdoor, uh, an outdoor dining air area over there. And uh, this, this area had flooded before and, and, uh, and, and we uh, and this is our restoration uh, after that flooding. Each, uh, this, this originally was Mr. Deering's pool room, and, uh, and, and uh, I'll show you where the pool table sat in just a second. Uh, and, uh, and also, he had a smoking lounge there. He was big into his cigars, so he had a smoking lounge, just, just, like, just like Daniel back there. He's got his own smoking lounge. He didn't tell you that. Uh, um, so, uh, it, it, it was converted to a shop and uh, a, a, the, the, the museum store. Uh, we actually designed every piece of furniture, Daniel, that went into the museum store. Uh, all of the custom lighting for, for, how the, for the displays. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and one of the things that, that is very, very unique, uh, this, is, this again, it, it all harkens back to the whole art of architecture. Um, as you can imagine, you can, you can see why this place would have a tendency to flood. It is right on the water's edge, and, and with sea level rise, it gets, it gets worse every year. And it has since, since actually flooded again. This is the pool, if anybody's, you've all been there, I'm sure. Um, but, but looking out the window to the pool uh, is, is this uh, amazing leaded stained glass uh, uh, door. Um, 
Now, now what we did to help protect this space is we put probably two and a half inch thick laminated glass uh, in front of these decorative historic glass doors, whether it's a conventional French door or whether in, in this particular case it, it's, it's the stained glass uh, doors. Um, there's, there's actually a piece of glass there between you and I on the inside here as we look into it and the pool on the other side. And it is so thick it was deliberately engineered to be able to hold back the water and it was set in, in concrete in the wall. Um, this, is, this was in fact his smoking lounge. That is probably one of the largest fireplaces that I've, uh, I've ever seen. We actually designed every piece of furniture in, in this room as well and, and, and set the lighting up so the idea was that you would, you would uh, be able to get, your, get lunch and sit down at one of these nice tables and that you, at the same time you, you would see uh, some of the, the items that were for sale as part of the, uh, the museum shop. Um, and just, just again, just how the windows uh, end in the, in the casework that was designed uh, to replicate some of the casework that was in the historic photographs and use it as a display case, in this case for some books, and, and I look, think those look like wine glasses now, um, uh, to, uh, to, to display and, and, and use uh, as part of the, the sales of, um, from the museum shop. So we're, 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 if we were sitting in this chair, we'd be sitting right next to the fireplace on the, on the, on the right-hand side. And that window over there was one of the windows that, that is sandwiched in such a way that, that, there's, um, uh, that it was intended to keep uh, the water out. Uh, we, we really took this um, to heart. The floor is terrazzo. It is restored. The doors on the left that we're not seeing terribly much of right now are also, are also uh, doors that uh, with, with this uh, hurricane, we're going to call it our, our own brand of hurricane glass because it's two and a half inches thick. It's, it's, it's like a fish tank. Um, but we took care of everything on this product from, from the way the jewelry is displayed in the display case at the cashier's counter, there's the, there's the, the, the cashier's terminals, to the, right down to the draperies in the room. It, was, it, it received that, that level of, uh, of, of attention and of course you could sit outside here as well. So um, just, to, just to give you an idea of the kind of attention uh, that, that went into uh, that sort of a, uh, of, of a project. Unfortunately, I, I need to say, uh, after this work was completed, another hurricane came through and, and the bay flooded once again. Uh, and some of the doors that, uh, not, the, not the doors that had the glass on them, but some of the doors that were uh, designed uh, to uh, withstand the, the hurricane flood that was, going, that was ultimately gonna ensue the, the, the 12 feet of water that, that can come up right behind Vizcaya. Um, they have seals, they have uh, seals that you had to inflate at that time. It, you had to blow up the, the, the seal like you're blowing up a tire on a car. Uh, and staff didn't blow up the seals uh, on, on uh, two of those doors that, 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 uh, that we know of. And the entire shop flooded once again. So it's just a total, total tragedy there uh, for, for all the effort that was put in. But one mistake in operations uh, all the windows did exactly what they were supposed to do. They held back all the water. Uh, so they have photographs inside the space while the flood is occurring. And you can see the water going up outside the window, but, but no water coming through. It was really, it was really great. Uh, but the flood, the, 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 the two uh, doors that I'm talking about are just, just um, uh, staff not, um, not fully implementing all of the procedures and taking it seriously. This is only a cat one storm. It's not going to be a problem. We don't have to worry, blah, blah, blah. Well, it, it, uh, they had to worry and, and, and should have worried and it caused a tremendous amount of damage. It's really, really uh, unfortunate. Let's go to, to something that was happier. This is what I passed out to uh, some of you earlier and there's some more copies in the back there. Feel free to, if you didn't get one the first time, to, to take a copy for yourself. Um, this, this is just a little booklet on, on one of our favorite Miami Beach projects. Um, this, this is Discovering the Lost Colony is what, is what, we, uh, what we called it. 
somewhere around 2010, if my memory serves me uh, correct. Um, we, had, we were given the opportunity uh, by the uh, city of Miami Beach to come in and re restore the Colony Theater and enhance the Colony Theater's theatrical capabilities. We had already been working for, for some years on, uh, on the Olympia Theater at the uh, Gusman Center for the Performing Arts. Uh, and and uh, we're super excited to, to do uh, our, what was, I think at that time, probably our first Art Deco project. Um, in, in any event, the, the approach that we take, uh, took to the project is the same approach that we take to virtually all of our products. We do one ton of research in advance. And this is an early photograph of, uh, of the, the colony, as you, as, as you can all see. Um, and, this, and, and there weren't a lot of good photographs to be had of the interior of the space. I was really disappointed. Uh, but what you're looking at is a photograph from Life magazine uh, where, where uh, aptitude tests are being given to new recruits uh, just around, uh, during, just before, uh, during World War II. Uh, so, we're, um, so the theater served uh, for, that, for that sort of a purpose and, and this was one of the few, uh, few photographs that we have of, of, uh, of, of the interior. Anyway, um, it did tell us a, a few secrets and every photo kind of gives us a, a few secrets. Uh, in 1965, after a renovation by uh, Maurice Lapidus, um, the, you can see from this photograph uh, that the entrance to the colony was moved to the street corner. Where, um, I think everybody knows where this is. It's, it's uh, Lennox uh, behind me, about where I'm standing over here, right? Um, and, and in any event, th th that is completely, whoops, different than the Lincoln Road entrance that we, that we see in the original photograph. And I think we can all appreciate that that this was probably not the historic preservation thing to do. Huh? That's right. <laughs> thumbs, <laughs> thumbs down big time. Um, this was a mess. This was wrong. I mean, you got this you know, amazing, whoops, where are we again? We got this amazing uh, entrance and, 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 and there we are shifting it to, to the entrance to the corner. I don't know what that logic was, but every so often us architects go off in the wrong direction. So. Uh, and, and, and this is a photo of the building, the way we took it over, uh, the way our, our firm kind of took it over again. That, that entrance off the corner over here um, and, and the completely incorrect um, uh, entrance canopy and, and, uh, and marquee. Uh, so, so we documented those existing conditions. This is what we do all the time. You'll, you can see that, that, uh, that uh, Lapidus uh, had created some elliptical lobby. Um, I don't know, in a, in a you know, in a, a, an ode to to having to be creative. Uh, it it overlapped the original lobby, which you can see is really right. You know, it's between these walls. It's this rectangular space. You'll see it in a minute again. Um, and and um, and even though we have all of this architecture in in front of us that is on axis, as symmetrical as can be. You know, we, we shift this over to the right. Um, the, the theater also had theatrical issues. There was a very limited ability here to, to, for, for creativity and shows. Uh, there was no real wing space and we couldn't do much to, to create any additional wing space. We didn't have land on either side. Um, and there was very little in the way of support space. There, there's, there's no fly loft. And, uh, and there are just uh, very, very small dressing rooms and, and um, very small um, restrooms in the back. And that's all you get if you're, if you're staging a show at the old colony. Uh, so, so we set out, this is that interior, we set out to, uh, to see if we could change all of this. Now, uh, originally this was a balcony th uh, theater. Um, you can, you can see the beginning of that balcony right here. See it, uh, the, you've probably also all been in this theater, um, but you, you would enter on both sides and there was a balcony up top and, but, but um, uh, in, in the wisdom, in the architectural wisdom, uh, Mr. Lapidus wanted to make this more of a theater for a dance. And so 
So he created the seating layout that you see here that just literally ramps up. Now, uh, I would, perhaps I would not have done that, um, but, you know, hindsight is 2020. Uh, and, uh, and so this is the air conditioning ductwork is, is also exposed in here. Uh, and, and it is not exactly a pretty place when we come into it. The seating was in fact the, uh, the original seating. Uh, it had the odor of all, I don't know, 75 to 80 years of, of, of original seating. Uh, and, um, and in any event, this is, this is what it looked like at the stage. It's a far cry from, from, um, from what we see today. It's a far cry from, from what the recruits saw when they were taking their aptitude tests in that Life magazine photograph. So we didn't, there was not much of the interior that was left. And we had to try to figure our way to, to an interior that, um, that, that picked up on what, we, what little we could get out of those historic photographs uh, and, and, and figure out how we were gonna uh, add to the theatrical capabilities of, of the theater at the same time. So this was, this was really a, 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 tough, a tough challenge. The first decision we made was a very easy one. We're, we're going to restore the original front lobby. We're gonna put the original ticket booth back out there. We're gonna put the original marquee back up in front of this building. That was the way it was designed. That's the way, that's the way God wanted it to be. This, uh, excuse me, um, uh, sorry. Uh, the, the, whoops, the, um, the coffee shop on the side works fine over here and just becomes a nice retail space you know, with, with the tables on the outside and I think it still exists that way. Um, and, and we didn't do a thing about moving the restrooms. There was no more space to move them to. But we did give management uh, an office in the front. So we do have management offices at the front and a ticket booth at the front and all those things that, that make, make the theater actually work. We also gave it handicapped accessibility through a ramp on the side of the building over here. And we expanded the side of the stage house. Remember, the, the old stage house was, was limited by the property line. The actual uh, property line uh, of, of, of the city property line literally was, was out here. Um, so it comes now all the way to the sidewalk. But that extra, we're gonna call it about 10 feet. That extra 10 feet made all the difference in the world for us to put it, uh, it to enhance the stage house itself. And, and so we now have a full fly loft there. You'll see a section through it in a minute. Uh, and, in a and we have a, a, an egress stair in, in, uh, in, in the back. We have uh, on stage uh, toilets and a quick change room off here on one side. And, uh, and we have a, a, a service elevator, an elevator designed to take a piano. We've got to have a piano on stage today. We've got to have the piano removed tomorrow. So, so where do we put it? We, we created a service elevator for that purpose. It comes up the service elevator, goes into this closet over here, and we surround, and effectively, we did what is kind of a theatrical no-no. We, we, we put all of the support space, the, 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 the chorus dressing rooms, uh, and, and I think we have uh, two, uh, two private dressing rooms, men's and women's, uh, on, on the floor above the stage. We would probably never do that, but there was no other choice. You're either not going to have a, you can, you, you can either make that decision or you'll never have any dressing rooms. So in, in this particular case, we made those, those sorts of tough decisions uh, and, and we used as best we possibly could uh, the space behind the, the stage and layered in uh, different levels. We've got a, a, you know, a, a second level and a third level and then the fourth level is the big, is the big uh, theatrical a, a, a support space a level right down everything right down to a to a laundry room to clean the clean the costumes uh, and and we and we raised the stage house to accommodate that so so the stage house you'll see a, an after uh, either drawing in just in just a second um, we we managed to uh, hide the air conditioning away up on the roof isolated from the stage by, by all of the theatrical equipment. There's actually an interstitial space in there so that if, uh, to, to, to capture the noise that might come from the dressing rooms and stop it from getting to the stage. Uh, if we have a leaky pipe in the dressing room on the, uh, in the shower room, uh, we can go into that interstitial space and, and correct our problem without messing up the, the theatrical uh, rigging system. And this is what's called an, under, an underhung uh, theatrical system. And there's our, that elevator in the back. So, 
So a, a creative uh, solution that, uh, that brought the theater uh, back to, to its original, um, forgetting the year 1935, I think, um, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and the, the only sacrifice is the fact that we, that we actually raised the stage house in the back, and if I didn't tell everybody, none of you would have known. So, <laughs> so, but, but, it, but it makes this theater work. It truly makes the theater work. And we got rid of that, the old marquee, we replicated the original marquee, I think we did a hell of a job on, on, on the original, uh, on replicating the original marquee, and, and uh, it, still, it still looks good uh, to, to this day. So one of our, uh, oh yeah, what, there's a, a couple other things. So what am I looking at here? That is the ceiling, uh, as we took it over, of, of the, original lobby just just note the whoops note the moldings and the beveled uh, uh, side and the, the plaster work and someone uh, from the from that particular renovation I don't want to use Maurice Lapidus's name again for this because um, the architects don't get to control everything unfortunately it's a shame but but in any event somebody just poked the air conditioning right through the ceiling the heck with that let's drop a ceiling down here and, and long and short is, we cracked the ceiling open as part of our demolition and we went, there's the original ceiling right there. So, so that gave us a tremendous opportunity to put the original ceiling back. We gave us the opportunity to study the colors, understand the color scheme for this, uh, and, and that's exactly uh, what, what, we, what we did going forward. Um, and we made it handicap accessible at the same time uh, and added a little bit of artwork and if you'll compare this interior now with, with our uh, acoustical uh, draperies that, that uh, go back and forth depending on the nature of the show. If we have a, a musical sh uh, show for some, for some reason and you want the room to be brighter, you pull the draperies back. Uh, if, you, if you want it to be a softer for a, perhaps a dramatic performance and, and, and to, to reduce the reverberation of the room, you... you uh, let the draperies out and you let them just hang, hang uh, straight up. So the, you can also see that, we, that we've added, uh, you can't really see it terribly well here tonight, but um, a, a nice uh, arc, uh, detail uh, on both sides of the proscenium arch that, there you go. Um, the the air, actual air conditioning return air is coming through this, through this grill, through that area on the, on the left and right of the stage. So, so now you've got a, a proscenium arch that is uh, exactly the same as the original proscenium arch uh, and, and uh, a, a replication uh, of, of the artwork that was uh, on both sides. And uh, we uh, rewove the original carpet that we actually found inside the theater. You dig hard enough, they always leave something behind. Um, and, uh, and, and so we have a, a rewoven original uh, carpet that matches that matches the original. We did the same thing on the Olympia Theater years ago. That carpet is, is also uh, pretty amazing, uh, thanks to the help of the Wool Bureau. Uh, and and uh, most importantly, we changed out all the seats and uh, replicated the original uh, end panels. They don't, they don't show up uh, terribly well in this photograph right now. But next time you are in the theater, just, just uh, poke around, look at the end panels and go, um, uh, the, these, these are the correct Art Deco end panels that, that, that go with them. Uh, um, with, these, with these seats. So it, it was indeed uh, our pleasure uh, to, um, uh, to, to turn this completely, uh, shall we say, turn this, <laughs> I didn't realize uh, exactly what I was saying, to turn this theater around. <laughs> so it's not entered from the corner, so it's entered where it, it originally was and to, and to have completely restored, restored this. So um, if you've got any energy left. If I haven't bored you all to death, we'll take one, we'll do, we'll do one more, Daniel. Um, and, and we'll make that the Versailles. This is a very, another very, very uh, special project. Um, it's, it is special and it will be special to all of you on Miami Beach. Um, uh, Amon Hotels, if, if you don't already know it, but you guys probably do, um, has uh, decided to purchase uh, the Versailles, the old historic Versailles Hotel, and 
uh, and to restore the Versailles uh, on, uh, as, uh, from what is absolutely deplorable condition right now. We're going to see some of that exi those existing conditions. Uh, and, and to build next to it uh, a, a residential condominium. But what it is unique about uh, Amman is that Amman is one of the most prestigious hotel chains in the world. Um, they have ho literally hotels all over the world, uh, including Asia, uh, and uh, in New York City as, as, as well. And they are, they're extremely high end. Uh, their rooms are very large. There is nothing uh, left to chance. If you're probably going to be spending every bit of $2,500 and up per night to stay at the Amman. Um, uh, and, and so everything in this hotel at the end of the day has to be perfect for this kind of guest. That's who they are. They also happen to love historic properties. And their, their New York hotel, if you get a chance to go up and, and visit that, um, it is, is no, uh, is no e exception. Uh, but, but those of us that worked on this, the Deniston team in, in, uh, in Asia, the Revolta team here in, in Coconut Grove, uh, and ourselves, and, and, and in fact, Daniel, right now, we're, we're going over the lobby interiors, by the way. Um, we'll, um, I think everybody will like them, but nonetheless. Uh, what is, what's unique about this is that it is not some huge hotel with, you know, 700 rooms or whatever. Uh, we have 56 hotel keys and 23 ultra luxury residences done by a, a, done by a Japanese architect, a, an architect named Kengo Kuma. Any, anyone ever hear of Kengo Kuma? Well, he is uh, internationally, he's quite, he is quite famous. So this, this is all about world-class amenities within a historic structure. And I think uh, all, of, all of you here certainly know exactly uh, where this is, so I'm not going to get into explaining this sort of stuff, but, but uh, it is, of course, right on the water. Uh, and if you've driven by lately, it is a very scary place. It is scary as heck, uh, and, and I probably told Daniel this, um, no developer in his right mind would try to restore this building. <laughs> because it is in such bad, poor condition, literally, you, no, it, uh, it has soul. It, its soul is still here, but, but it hasn't gone to the, <laughs> but it is an, an, the ultimate challenge structurally. And I think you're seeing that from, from the damage that you're, you're going to see in this, uh, in this set of, of photographs. Uh, it is um, you wouldn't want to walk on any of the floors upstairs. So, so in, as part of this process, they are going to literally take out those floors one at a time, shore the entire building, take out those floors one at a time, and rebuild the structure on the inside, all the way up. Now, you, could, you can't do that if you're I'm a, a Marriott hotel. Right? You, I mean, the, the, the operating pro forma for that doesn't work. But if you're in a Mon hotel, you can do that. And if you're, if you're selling residences next to the Amman at a, a probably amazing prices, um, you, that, that complements this. And, and those two together are, are, in my view, the only reason that we've been able to achieve the design things that, that we will have achieved uh, here. Um, first of all, you should, you, you should know that, whoops, uh, the, uh, the original uh, hotel um, had a dining room off on the left-hand side and, and that that uh, was, has been torn down by someone before us. Um, our, our, our owner has agreed to, to uh, reconstruct that uh, dining room off, off on, on the left. Uh, you'll, you'll see some other photographs of it. You're also going to see that, that as part of that plan, it really does complement the Roy France design here. And, and, and it just it adds, it's not just the tower, it's the tower and the building next to it, and they all, they all uh, work uh, together. So, so uh, what's, what is uh, unique here is, is the size of these rooms. As you, as you look at this, you know, there's three rooms in the front, three rooms in the back, 
Uh, and, and one of the things that was the most controversial and the, and, uh, the most challenging is the uh, Amman rooms have to be large. That's the, that's the way the flag operates. That's what sets them apart from everything else. So, so to, to enlarge those, and, and they also needed a view of the water, to enlarge those, we actually expanded the building towards, towards the water. So this gray that you see here is actually an expansion of the facade. Uh, not something we, do, we, we, we took lightly. The facade to the east is exactly the Roy France original facade. The facade to the, excuse me, the west. Um, the facade to the north, the facade to the south is exactly the Roy France facade. But the ocean side facade is where we expanded the building to get them a, a footprint that would meet the hotel's criteria and standards. And also up on the roof, there is an, another uh, restaurant that is, that is up on the roof, hidden from the view in the front. You can't see it from, uh, you're not gonna see it at all from across the street. Um, but, uh, but you'll see what, what all of that looks like here in a few minutes. But it is a, uh, an expansion uh, of, of, the, of the area. Now, when we looked at those uh, existing photographs, you're gonna, you, you would realize that, that this entrance canopy over here uh, it is, uh, has been torn down long ago. Uh, the folks before us were talking about putting up a canvas awning. Uh, this, is, this is my firm's interpretation of my firm's drawings that show uh, us replacing the or, or original uh, canopy, but, but uh, raising it up. See the dashed line below is where it was historically. Historically, I can't get a fire truck under there or, or, or an emergency vehicle under there. So we are, we are breaking the rules a little bit by, by raising it up uh, just enough. But I think uh, as you look at it from the front and as you look at it from the renderings, you're gonna say that it, was, that it is well worth it to have the original facade uh, back. So, so what, what you're seeing here is on the, on the uh, west facade of, of, uh, of the building is, is pretty much a textbook uh, or restoration that is actually underway, literally underway right now. Uh, and this is what it will uh, look like when it is complete with, with uh, the new entrance porte cochere uh, on, on the front. Uh, and, and the sides of, of the hotel in, in this case are, are visible and, and those sides, except for this very, very far edge over here, are very authentic and, and, uh, and very original to the building uh, as well. So, so the building presents itself as it, it, uh, as it did uh, when, it was, when it was first built in the very early 1940s by, by Roy France. And, uh, and frankly, this, uh, this edition of the, of the entrance canopy was, was his son's edition in 1955. Uh, any, uh, additionally, um, this is the explanation of, of how we've uh, added that the gray area here uh, and, and the outdoor uh, in the outdoor balconies to accommodate Amman. Um, Amman absolutely unequivocally needed uh, hotel rooms that overlooked the ocean and that had balconies overlooking uh, the water and there were no balconies on the back of this building. So we had to come up with a design that, that, uh, that managed to make that work, work aesthetically uh, and, and, yet, and yet provide the kind of view that the Amman guest is, is expecting. Uh, and, and this is uh, that facade. The lower section of, of the facade is very much uh, concrete and stucco uh, as, uh, as the original uh, hotel. Uh, and the upper uh, portion of this is very much glass to allow the transparency uh, of being able to see out and, and the light to, to be able to come in. Uh, we went through at least uh, three or four iterations, uh, maybe more, uh, to, to come up with this facade. I, I was looking at each one of them as I put this uh, presentation together again today. I said, well, do we show all of those? No, let's not. <laughs> some, some were glass, some were, some were half this, some were half that, some were all concrete. I think we came up with a good balance between the, the two. And, and this is the other addition in the rear that, uh, that I was telling you about. The Gulfstream Room is what that was originally called. The Gulfstream Room will, will come back as part of 
uh, as part of this, uh, this concept. Uh, and so it's the Gulf Stream room that you're seeing off on the left-hand side over here. That's pretty textbook in the way, in the way that is, is being done also. Uh, and one other new element, uh, the front is just completely restored, that's all fine. Uh, one other new element is this, is the entrance to the, the dining experience that is up on the roof. You, you, you um, can either get there by being a guest of the hotel or you can pull your Ferrari up uh, right here to the entrance over here and, and, uh, and enter into a separate lobby that takes you into a separate elevator that takes you up to the rooftop, uh, rooftop restaurant. Um, and so that's how the, the Amman itself will, will be restored and that's the work that is underway uh, structurally right now. Uh, where where our only approvals left on the project uh, are, are approvals for um, uh, for the interior lobby. Um, one of the things that also became controversial and, and was uh, quite the challenge uh, was the, the Amman residences. Now, now the owner um, uh, had uh, chosen Kengo Kuma, uh, Kengo uh, being a very famous Japanese architect. Um, but how do you explain the, the heart and soul of Miami Beach uh, to a Japanese architect who doesn't speak English and, and I'm the guy that has to explain it to him. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, <laughs> he wanted first to do a wood building. Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe not. So, so how do we how do we bring these two uh, challenges uh, together? Uh, there was a by the way you should you should also know that there was a previously approved plan. That previously approved plan came out way in in front of where the the building will be today, and and so we completely threw out the previously approved plan, uh, and and Kingo Kuma redesigned the plan. This is whoops, that's. That is a, rend a rendering, a ghosted in rendering, of what was previously approved. As, as you can imagine, that previously approved uh, 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 building was a little heavy handed. Huh? And it also heavy handedly blocked the view as you drive up Collins Avenue at Versailles. Um, we were fortunate enough to be able to convince uh, the owner that that the redesign of this could take the shape that it is taking here. This is uh, Kengo Kuma's rendering, not, not ours. Uh, the other renderings are ours. Um, the, uh, but, it, but you see that you'll, you'll see how this sets back. The Kuma building is lighter, much lighter, much lighter floors, much lighter in every way. And, and how it sets back further uh, from and, and exposes more of, of the Versailles Tower as, as it goes up. And then this is, this is the, the uh, narrow shape of the tower that faces the uh, uh, Collins Avenue. Uh, and so, so that, uh, the, the building actually starts uh, literally way up in the air. I'm forgetting how many floors, but it's at least uh, five or six. So, yeah. Uh, and, uh, and, and this is how the two of them will genuinely look together. We've got a, a, a better and larger gap between the two than, than before, and, and hopefully uh, they'll, they'll complement uh, each other. And so just in case we want to, anybody wants to buy one of these, I can put you in touch with the owner. We can, we can, we can close that deal tonight. Um, <laughs> but rest assured, you'll have privileges in the dining room in the Versailles next door. <laughs> so so um, wish them luck. I think this is, this is really the last chance, the last hope for, in all seriousness, for saving the Versailles. Uh, and and, and um, I am just pleased every day that I know that they're, that they're moving, uh, moving forward. So, uh, and that uh, concludes my presentation. I'd be delighted to answer any questions you might have. Well, um,